So I've been a fan of Elgato products. It's no surprise, you can see in my desk, I'm using the Elgato Wave Arm and the microphone, the Wave 1. And I recently purchased this little nifty key light that connects to Wi-Fi is, and is integrated with my Stream Deck over here. And the Stream Deck has helped me edit a lot faster in Adobe Premiere. And I just really like this arm. They add a lot of usability and features into their products. For example, this microphone is not just any basic USB-C microphone. It has a limiter so that if you speak really loud, it'll make sure that you don't clip. So all these smart little functionalities that they add to their products, like for example, this has a USB-C pass-through so you don't waste your battery. It's always powered by USB-C. So right now I can't even turn it on because I have to plug it in. And that's exactly what I want because I want everything tied into my ecosystem and integrated. So when I heard about their wave panels, I was very, very intrigued by this. I was like, is this some kind of gimmick? But then of course I go on YouTube, I watch like Linus Tech Tips and it seems like it does work. So my dream is to use a shotgun mic in this fake studio, this tiny little apartment and not have to worry about all the reverberation. Right now I'm using a lav mic and that is my hope. So these are very, very expensive wave panels. Let's see if they actually work. So let's go buy it and wait for the shipment to come in. And by the way, this video is not at all sponsored by Elgato. In fact, I purchased all these products with my own cash. They would never ever send free product to a small channel like me. So this is really my unbiased opinion. Two days later. So two big boxes just appeared on my doorstep. I'm really excited, they just got delivered. I have the blue set and the black set. And unfortunately, one of the boxes looks like they were damaged. So hopefully there's no damage to the actual foam or the acoustic panels that are inside. Let's unbox this, let's install it and see how it goes. So these packages are really big, but they're pretty light. So you can pick them up really, really easily. So here we have the frames, we got the clips. We got mounting, which is cool because this is apparently the Tessa mounting adhesive strips, which should help preserve the walls and not cause any damage. Some more frames, instruction manuals. Elgato always has really good instruction manuals. It's just very easy to read. It's something that I actually appreciate. All right, so for the moment of truth, let's see how the wave panels actually look. Ooh, okay, so these are the blue. Nice, they're a little bit lighter than I expected which is a good thing. Oh wow, they feel nice. Oh wow, holy. Wow, I just put my ear next to it and I can definitely feel, this feels really premium. This is like thick and dense. This is my first immediate impression. I like that it has a bunch of grooves. This means that the sounds get trapped and then they, they kind of just die. Like the, the reverberations kind of just get trapped in the very organic grooves. And we got six of these. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm, I'm saying this is, Looking very promising. What a cool package. Now we got the clips. Yeah, all this packaging feels very premium, I have to admit. Feels, okay, yeah, these are the connector clips. Now these are the ones that I'm most concerned about is the fact that I'm used sticking this onto the wall. I'm not gonna be drilling anything into this wall because this is a rental unit and I don't wanna lose my safety deposit. So I'm hoping that this special power strip Tessa from Tessa does not leave any markings on the wall because apparently they're supposed to be non-traceable. So immediately with the black one, I'm not too happy about it. I kind of much prefer the blue versions because I think this is going to absorb a lot of light and I need as much light as possible in this very dim area. So I'm, I, if I had a strong preference, I would have just gone, got maybe all blue, but maybe this will look good, who knows, we'll see. One of my main concerns with putting dark colors like black or blue is that it's not, this white wall isn't gonna be reflective of light anymore and this place is already really dim and I need the most kind of like ambient light in it because there's no, there's no actual light at the top over here. It's just, just a really poor design. So that's one of my little bit, little bit of concerns. Now, near the end of this video, I'll report back and see how I like to design the colors and how it impacts my environment. Does it make it worse? We'll find out. So one of the things I kind of regret doing is putting this frame over here. It's kind of just random. It's just a small little picture that really doesn't fit in. And sometimes when I film behind the computer, I see that little picture and it just looks really awful. So yeah, this, this picture frame is a big regret and I hope to remove it and replace it with some nice foam padding. RIP random little painting. We're gonna have to remove it. Now, one thing I wanna mention is that I recently purchased an Ikea carpet and this has really been just a nice change to my day-to-day -day life because this was just a blank kind of surface. It's gonna help with the acoustics. All right, that's it. Let's try and install these. 
So one quick pro tip while you're assembling these hexagon shapes is that you should lay it down on a flat surface. So what you wanna do is lay it flat on the surface and then just put pressure down and it snaps in much more easily than having to do it when you're up here. So I do have your typical command strips and these I trust a little bit more because they have these pull flaps and what basically when you're done using this, you just pull on it all the way and it gently takes it off the wall. Whereas these ones, I'm not sure about this. I, I'm hoping that it has the same mechanism. Maybe it does, it kind of looks like it does. It's kind of confusing, it's hard to tell. So these are supposed to be high quality and these itself are probably really expensive. I mean, that's why you're paying so much for these foams. Yeah, if you want to remove it, you, you just pull. So it's very similar to command strips. Shouldn't leave any marks. So right here, I have my lint-free cloth. I think it's gonna be sufficient. And I have some alcohol, so I can clean the surface if I have to, but I don't think I'm gonna need it. So I'm not really sure if this step is necessary, but whatever, let's do it. Blue goes to the wall. Okay, so this adhesive is extremely confusing. I thought there was uh, something that you had to peel. You had to peel off the blue side so that there, it exposes the adhesive, but no, that's not the case. What happens is that when you pull it out, this side is actually adhesive, but it doesn't feel adhesive. But when you stick it to the wall, it somehow sticks. This type of adhesive is definitely different than your normal ones that you get from command strips. So I think this installation is gonna be a lot easier if I just move this stuff out of my way so I can just mount it on the wall over here. So let's do that. And by the way, I did a review of this couch. It's called the Cozy Couch. I really like it. It's super compact, fits perfectly in this small space. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna check it out. So while I got this couch move, I might as well just vacuum this area, do some spring cleaning. And by the way, I did review this uh, Tinico A11 Hero. It's still been a fantastic vacuum. I've been using it for more than four years and it's held up the test of time. So yeah, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check out that as well. And this is not sponsored. I paid my own cash for this, so I definitely recommend it. One quick pro tip, if you want to mount these kind of perfectly, you should use a level. So in my case, let's say I want to mount it right over here. So right there is pretty level. And then you'll just probably want to use a pencil to mark down where you want to put the sticker. These are really light, so I don't think it's gonna fall or anything. There's these two holes in the back, or five holes, whatever. You just put them in, very easy. I'm not sure what kind of pattern I want. I think one of the hardest things is deciding how you wanna lay this out because I feel like you can't make a mistake uh, unless you wanna tear down one of those adhesives, which costs a lot of money. I don't know what, I, what I'm doing, to be honest. One, two, three, four, five. So we got this really easy clipping mechanism that joins two pieces that are adjacent. All we need to do is just snap it into place. And that should help it keep it more secured. And we gotta put the clips on. So it's really good to mix up the patterns so that when the sound waves get trapped, it gets more confused and hopefully suppresses more sound. And yes, sound waves can get confused. Now, is there gonna be a difference in sound quality? Let's find out. Now, I don't know if I should put two more at the bottom if it's too close to the couch, or should I keep building up like this? I don't know. So the foam on this is actually really good. When I place it near my face, I can definitely feel the sound being reduced in my surroundings. So it's definitely working. It's definitely blocking some noise and trapping the sound waves inside these ridges and whatnot. So it's doing a good job. Let's see how it does when it's actually mounted on top of here. So I ended up putting some acoustic panels in the kitchen area, unfortunately. I think it's gonna look nice. I'll, maybe I'll get used to it, we'll see. Let's see how it goes. Hey, it doesn't look that bad, honestly. It looks all right. Maybe it needs one more at the bottom, but I think that's fine for now. So I could keep extending these ones out towards the computer. That may make sense since I record near the computer, but I just don't like the fact that it's near my line of sight and my vision. So I'm not sure if that's gonna bother me. Another option is that I put it on this blank wall just to reduce some of the noise over there. So maybe that's a better choice. All right, so we finally finished putting up all these acoustic wave panels. Uh, one in the living room area, one in the kitchen. You can see those two over there. One behind the TV 
And then lastly, the, the big ensemble, the one over there. So right off the bat, I have to say it does look nice. It doesn't look too gamery. I did notice that the reflection, all the lights bouncing off the white walls has been reduced because there's obviously a lot less white area to reflect light. So that's kind of a downside, like over here, um, it just feels really dark. I wish these acoustic foam panels were white or something. I wish they had the option. So at least that would reflect some light. But I do notice when I speak around here, it does sound like it's absorbing a lot of the sound. So pretty cool so far. Let's do the sound test and see if I wasted all my money on this. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the fence. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the fence. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the fence. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the fence. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So what did you think of the sound test? Was there a noticeable difference between using the foam versus not using the foam? Well, in my opinion, I have to say when I was using the lav mic clip to my shirt, I literally did not hear any difference in the sound quality. It's really, really hard. And maybe if you listen really, really close, you might be able to hear it, but it's pretty much not uh, necessary to have any treatment in your room if you're using a lav mic. And that's my personal opinion. Please let me know if you disagree with me. However, when I switched to the shotgun mic, there was a pretty decent difference in sound quality. There was a less reverb, less echoes and stuff like that, so it sounded a lot better. If you're gonna be using something like a lav mic or a condenser microphone that's very close to you all the time, then I don't really see it worth having to pay all the money and set up all those work to treat your room. Just stick to this and you're gonna sound pretty great. However, if you insist to not have the microphone in your shot and you like to film with a shotgun mic, then I think it's definitely worth it. I did hear a noticeable difference, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. Is it worth the amount of money and effort to reduce that echo and that reverb in this room? So here's what I like about the Elgato wave panels. The first thing is that I really like that it was a very easy installation. The process of setting up the frames, clicking together and then sticking onto the wall and you're just simply putting on the foam pads was a very, very easy process and quite intuitive. I also like that the quality, the material of the foam like was really good. It didn't have any weird smell, which was one of my main concerns because usually when you get foam, it usually gives like a toxic smell, but these smell very neutral. They have no impact. Um, and I also noticed that they are quite thick at two inches and there's also an air gap below it to help more with the sound absorption. So there's a dense layer and then like a less dense layer. According to Elgato's website, wave panels are optimized to absorb within the average frequency range of human speech, which falls apparently between 100 hertz to four kilohertz. Another thing I like about Elgato wave panels is that they're very easy to remove from the wall without a trace. Check this out. So to remove them, you have to pull 25 centimeters down towards the wall. So gently hold the frame and then pull parallel 25 centimeters to the wall. It just comes out very nicely. Boom. All right, other side, we're gonna just hold on to this. Just a long pull. Another thing I like is that they were basically effective. They were helpful in reducing the reverb in this room. And the last thing I want to mention is they did look nicer than I imagined. Although I did have some qualms with the actual color, which I'll talk about in the con, con section. And that brings me to what I dislike about the Elgato panels. And one, it's the color choice. I don't like the fact that there's only black and blue. It's almost like you're branding your house with the Elgato theme. I wish they provided more customization, like different colors. And another caveat with these darker colors is that they tend to absorb a lot of light. So it kind of makes my place seem a little bit more dim. Maybe that's something I'm perceiving in my head, but I do feel like it's a little bit dimmer in here, but it's not too bad to be honest. 
maybe this is a positive for you. Maybe this is the creative choice you're trying to go towards. But for me, I would like something more neutral, something that kind of blends in with the wall so it's not so popping out of the picture. I'd be curious to know what you think about the aesthetics with these foam pads. Let me know in the comment section down below. So the last two items or concerns I have with these Elgato wave panels is the fact that it's made from foam and it's, it's a black color. So it may be perceptible to absorbing a lot of dust and it may be difficult to clean because it's made of foam. So that's one of my long-term concerns with this. I will update this video in the comment section down below if I find that the kind of material deteriorates or it collects too much dust and it just looks really bad or it's very hard to clean. Another thing I don't like about the Elgato wave panels was the packaging. Elgato tries to be eco-friendly with its packaging, but the amount of excessive plastic wrap that was included in the Elgato wave panels was really alarming and not eco-friendly at all. So in conclusion, the Elgato wave panels are very easy to install. They look the nicest amongst other foam competitors, and they actually improve my audio recordings. However, in the end, I was not satisfied with the overall aesthetics. For the typical scenes or positions at which I film, I found that the foam's stark contrast against the white walls in the background to be too distracting, uh, at least for me or for my viewers. I also found that the sparse black and blue foam panels behind the TV and in my kitchen area to constantly remind me of work, which was affecting my mental well-being. So I ended up consolidating all the foam onto one wall, which was a lot less distracting, at least for me and my viewers. And I ended up replacing some of the Elgato wave panels with a more white neutral looking fiberglass panel from a company called Tonin. If I could go back in time, and if I knew that Tonin's acoustic panels were, some, were something that I could buy off Amazon easily, I would have definitely got them instead, as I think they're much more pleasing to the eye, more customizable with their color options, and just perform a lot better at diffusing and absorbing lower frequencies of the human voice, which foam isn't the best at. In the end, you live, you learn. I will leave links in the description for both these products. I think they're both great. And let me know if you have any questions treating your room. See you in the next video.